China issued strong private warnings to the U.S. government about a planned trip to Taiwan by House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, which included a possible military response. Meanwhile, Taiwan is reportedly staging air raid drills ahead of the possible visit. Now, according to the Washington Post, White House officials are concerned that Chinese leaders could see Pelosi's visit as a, quote, purposeful provocation and spark a diplom diplomatic crisis in the Taiwan Strait. Now, if the visit goes through, Pelosi would be the first House Speaker to visit Taiwan in 25 years. In a recent op-ed for The Post, columnist and senior fellow at the Ethics and Public Policy Center, Henry Olson, wrote, quote, the free world would be shaken if Taiwan were to fall into China's grasp. That's exactly why Pelosi should go. Our Asian allies look to us to defend them against China's threat, and a visit by Pelosi would signal that Taiwan's quest to remain free is supported by a top U.S. leader. Henry joins us now to expand on his op-ed, and we're also glad to be joined by Dan Cohen journalist at Mint Press News. Thank you so much for joining us. So, Henry, I wonder if you could start by just expanding on your op-ed for us. Lay out the argument for Pelosi going to Taiwan. Yeah, Taiwan is essential to the free world security, both because of its position in the um, China, Western Pacific and also because it produces the vast majority of semiconductors. Taiwan falls to the Chinese, then they have economic blackmail ability, not over us, but across all of our allies. So the reason for Pelosi to go is to signal to the Chinese that, yes, uh, we are willing to make strong efforts in order to keep Taiwan outside of the red Chinese orbit. Uh, it doesn't change officially U.S. policy of strategic ambiguity, but it signals that people who really matter in the U.S. government uh, want to see Taiwan remain independent. And I think that's in the free world's interest. Hmm. What do you think, Dan? I guess, you know, my question is, does signaling this actually do anything to China other than, you know, make them more inclined to start some conflict with Taiwan? Does it actually deter them? What do you think? Well, I hope Henry is ready to lead the neocon division of the think tank brigade into war against China, because that's exactly what his op-ed is calling for. The Chinese have made it abundantly clear that Pelosi's visit to Ukraine uh, to I'm sorry to Ukraine to Taiwan is a total provocation and any and they're not afraid to use force if they have to. I mean the idea of the US being able to to defeat China in Asia and specifically in Taiwan is so is completely absurd and is only in the most feverish imagination of neocons in Washington and for anyone who wants peace in this world and prosperity, it's the absolute worst idea possible. We saw that today uh, Taiwan is having military drills and air raid sirens are going off as uh, you know in preparation. So this is a this is a terrible omen, and Pelosi's visit should be condemned by anyone by everyone. Henry, your response? Well, yeah, I think the question is, do you think that Taiwan? is going to be invaded or is likely to be attacked by China to begin with. You know, I think it's been increasingly clear that the Chinese want to conquer Taiwan. They prefer to do it peacefully. They'll do it by war if they have to. With respect to war in Asia, this is not a land war in Asia. This is a sea battle, and that is one that the United States and its allies can prevail in. It doesn't mean it's an automatic gimme, but it means that it's one that we can prevail in because you're not facing 1.3 billion Chinese on land. I think that what you have to look at is what the Chinese objective is. The Chinese objective is to maximize their strategic sphere of influence in Asia with the least cost possible. The more we're willing to say that there's actually going to be a cost, the less likely they will be to do what they would do otherwise, which which is invade Taiwan if they knew that there was not going to be a response from us or our allies. Mm. But Henry, this doesn't seem to be working, for instance, in the Ukraine-Russia conflict, right? We're raising the cost for Russia. They're just doing it anyway. Uh, it's, you know, making us somewhat more miserable domestically. The conflict is going on. But, it, you know, I, I have lost kind of any faith that we can dissuade Russia from this cause by the kind of things we're doing. So I guess why would... Taiwan be any different? And, and in fact, Taiwan is probably a harder case because this is further removed from a, a sphere of U.S. influence than, uh, you know, Ukraine, which is in, in Europe and, you know, where we have many regional allies is. 
Well, we have many regional allies in Asia. Japan has uh, called for us to state clearly that we will defend Taiwan. Japan, our strongest ally in the Northern Pacific, is positioning its military on some of its territory so it can defend Taiwan. It's prepared to breach their 1% limit of GDP on defense so that they can successfully rearm to combat uh, China. Failure to confront China in Taiwan has regional implications in the Pacific as well, just in the way that failure to confront Russia in Ukraine would have had regional uh, implications for our allies in Europe. The question is, do you believe that the United States is safer with allies in Europe and Asia that keep our potential adversaries farther away from us? Or do you think that that draws us into conflicts that are unnecessary? People on the libertarian right or the populist left tend to say, we shouldn't have those alliances or we shouldn't take them seriously. Uh, people on the, the more sensible right or center think that we should, and I fall in that camp. Dan, do you want to take that up? What's your answer to that question? Well, the I mean, the idea that the United States can prevail in war against China in the South China Sea, as Henry said, is completely ludicrous. I mean, we, the U.S. is unable to defeat Russia, uh, defeat Russia in Ukraine, even as it subcontracts out this war to Ukraine. Um, I mean, we the U.S. failed in a 20-year war in Afghanistan, a bunch, a bunch uh, against a bunch of farmers uh, in Syria. The U.S. failed in Libya. The U.S. succeeded in destroying the government, and that's led to open slave markets. So everywhere the U.S. has intervened has led to absolute catastrophes. And those are against much smaller countries that don't have nuclear weapons. So what we are looking at is if this actually, you know, if this war that that Henry wa apparently wants and thinks the U.S. can win is at best a zero sum game. Taiwan would be a smoldering rubble, a smoldering pile of a smoldering pile of rubble. And, you know, the idea of nuclear war makes me shudder and any sane person should should feel the same. So I just, you know, can't imagine how any rational person would would think that uh, the U.S. should be agitating for war against China in especially in China's backyard. It's just completely insane. Henry, is there a non-military uh, strategy for constraining or confronting China? Because I, you know, I don't want to see I, I, China. You know, what China, an authoritarian country, did during uh, the COVID pandemic is horrifying to me. I, I don't. I. I I have no desire to see them expand uh, expand their global influence and reach. Uh, but I, I, I guess, being on the libertarian right, I am. I am. Sim I'm similarly skeptical, like Dan. Uh, that the that the military option a, is actually working or can work. So what is what what else is on the table for preventing them, you know, from 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 us living under the Chinese century or something like that? Well, first of all, military shield is the best way to do that. You know, I'm not. Well, I don't want war with China, but I don't think you should shirk away from it because I don't think they've demonstrated an objective limitation. You know, it's not like they want Taiwan and then don't want anything else. They wouldn't be signing agreements across the globe, putting military bases in Africa, which they're doing in Djibouti, sending a Blue Ocean Navy into the Indian Ocean, if their objectives were limited to just getting a wayward province. For uh, non-military things, what we should do is withdraw from China, trade with China as quickly as is feasible and possible. It's basically American money uh, that is propping up the Chinese government and propping up the Chinese military. We've been financing their rise through money and technology for the last 20 years, and we should simply stop doing it. And that's going to mean tariffs, and that's going to mean some form of subsidies, bringing things back to the American sphere of influence in North America, and it's going to mean a lot of diplomacy. But if you constrain the growth of their economy and cut them off from Western technology as much as is feasible, then that limits their ability to grow and threaten us, and that would be something that I would strongly endorse. So, Dan, I wonder if we can get you to agree with that. I mean, do you agree that we should be withdrawing economically from China and becoming much more self-sustainable? I'm all for becoming more economically self-sustainable. What I'm not for is uh, is extreme moves that will only dis further disintegrate 
the world economy, increase prices, increase inflation like we've been suffering from. I mean, we just cut off Russia from from the Western uh, economic system and Russia's and the Russian ruble is doing great and we're suffering from huge inflation. So for average Americans who are struggling to put food on the table, pay their rent and fill their tank of gas, it's pretty obvious that doing the same to China is only going to blow back on the United States and not on, you know, wealthy elites in Washington and and on Wall Street who are going to benefit from this, but for regular people like the guy who sleeps in in his car on my street or if you walk around downtown Washington, the homeless encampments. So that should be the primary focus is actually improving this country, not figuring out how we can strangle some other country on the other side of the world that is no longer some tiny uh, country. It's, it's a major force to be reckoned with. And we need real diplomacy in the goal of peace, not in you know, aggression, whether it's through military or economic. Hmm. Well, Henry and Dan, thank you so much for joining us and having this debate. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And we'll have more Rising right after this.